was the debugger drivers and the display driver. It also partly initializes itself so as the debugger can run. Then it keeps on executing the ki initialize kernel function which handles second phase of kernel booting. The first phase of kernel booting is only for the debugging purposes. It lets you run the debugger from a CL port or a USB port. The second phase comes up. The first thing it does is clear the memory used by the first phase. Then it initializes hardware abstraction layer. Then it initializes the object subsystem. All the things you are seeing, all files, all registry hives, all the network connections, they are part of object manager subsystem. This is what is initialized in OB init system. Then it sets up boot time bias for ASLR. ASLR stands for ASLR stands for hmm? yes, correct. It's a sort of protection put in place by Microsoft so as to so as if you run a exe, it loads at different addresses at different boot times. Then it initializes the first kernel process, which you see if you run a control shift escape task manager, you will see a process named as system. This process entry is created now, and then we create the first user mode process, SMSS, session manager subsystem.exe. It creates the user mode stuff and sets up user mode. So now we start talking about VBoot Kit 2.0. A. Actually, VBoot Kit 2.0 was demonstrated for the 64-bit kernels back in Dubai earlier this year. However, this is a complete rewrite for support of, we will cover these things later on. So, this is the objective of VBoot Kit. To get the Windows system running, only we have in control. That's it. Rest, it should work just as it used to work normally. It should also pass all the security features, doesn't trace any flags, ki I have been hijacked, I have been booted up, I have already have a virus or something. And we should not patch anything on the hard disk. It's all completely done in runtime. You boot from a CD, you get your job done, you reboot the system, no proof left of what you did to the system. So basically you don't have any traces back. So this is the basically the overview of how VBoot Kit works. How many of you guys know INT13? INT13 is the mechanism used by DOS, the pre-operating system environment, to read hard disk. So what we do is we hook this piece of code, and whenever we load is Windows loads something special, such as a boot manager, Windows loader. We take the control, see whether it's our data, it needs to be patched, modified, or something, and then pass the control to the windows. We do this for all the stages. And this process is continued until the kernel comes up. We would get 2.0 featured a major design change where we don't, earlier we used to patch protections in the kernel. We had patch guard, we will patch it. However, Windows 2.0 from starting up, it was modified a design change that we will not patch any protection. Just clever hooking of code so as the patch, the condition that they are able to detect us will not occur. We will not patch any security protections at all. So this is the exact functional workout in details. We boot from somewhere, say CD-ROM, PXE, and we move to the this address. This address is not a specific one because in 16-bit mode, we only have access to one megabyte of memory. So we can only use one megabyte of memory. So this is almost to the end. Say something in the midway, but we can access, but that's troublesome. So we use this addresses. We hook INT13. The hook searches every read request for a signature. If signature matches, it executes the payload. Payload is something, say, we want to patch this, we want to patch boot manager or something. 
So now we would get two reads the MBR, sets up everything so as Windows can execute. Please remember, we never booted from the hard disk. We booted from the CD-ROM drive or the PXE or the USB flash drive. So now what we are doing is, we are doing the job of BIOS to read the disk and start up Windows. So when Windows boot sector loads, MBR loaded the boot sector, yes. Just slide the CD ROM into the system and reboot. What BIOS will do is BIOS will boot from the CD. The moment we boot from the CD, we load our own code, complete code, to the memory at this address 0 into 9 E triple 0, and then we hook the hard disk. So you will be having a separate CD for that or? No, no. One CD is enough. It's just one CD, you put it, anyways, it's just a few kilobytes of code. It's not big code. So one CD is more than enough. It doesn't even use 10 kilobytes. So now the code from the CD, which is in the memory, reads the MBR. And it's the job of MBR to follow the next stages. So now we are loading the anti-boot sector, that 8 kilobytes of code or 16 sectors which loads boot manager. However, when the boot manager is getting loaded to memory, we find the following signature. Last 8 bytes of boot manager.exe. This is the signature. So whenever we have the last ending of the boot manager.exe, we know that boot manager is getting loaded into memory and we can patch it. So the payload patches boot manager.exe at one location only. Patching, patching is something, let's say you have a 10 instructions in a row, move EAX, comma EBX, and we have 10 instructions in a row. Now you just insert another instruction in the middle, which says jump to this address, modifying the actual byte, which changes code flow, is called patching. Patching is of two types also, data patching and code patching. So if the code is following through some data, so you can patch the data, which will trigger the code flow change. Yes, we are modifying it in memory. In RAM. We never modify the hard disk. So now boot manager gets loaded, and the 16-bit header that we talked earlier about gets execution. It verifies the checksum and the checksum is verified. We have never modified. Actually, what we do is instead of patching the boot manager, we patch this 16-bit code. This 16-bit code doesn't have any checksum. So you can get in control and Windows will not detect it. So now boot manager passes the check successfully and it is mapped into memory at this specific address and control is transferred to the original function bm main. Now we also apply a single patch to boot manager so as when it loads the next exe, it can be winresume.exe if it was a hibernate case or it can be windows loader case, winload.exe. We hook it and then let the windows continue so as it will display you the list of operating systems so as user is able to choose the operating system. However, what our operating system he chooses? We are completely in control. 